Hello and welcome to Finance Conversations. This is the 61st episode of the Merging Life and Money Show, and I am super excited to be here. For those of you who do not know me, I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I assist professional women bridge the gap between life and money by tooling them with the necessary skills and information they need to take control of their money, manage their finances, and recognize that they can live their best lives with the money they have. Thank you. Thank you for joining in today. So if you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to give you essential information about how to attain financial wellness and live a life of means and purpose. So as you may know, the Merging Life and Money Show's primary purpose and my very strong why is to empower as many women as possible by sharing what I know about money and finance so that they can live their greatest lives yet. So as I end, as I should say, as the end of Financial Literacy Month approaches, I will be remiss if I did not talk about its importance and its benefits. So today, I will discuss not just financial literacy, but also financial education and how they assist us in achieving financial wellness. So grab a pen and a notebook as you might want to take some notes to share and discuss with family members, friends, and colleagues, because it is about sharing values that could benefit others. So if you have any question, again, let me say, make sure to type them in the chat. And if you want to talk to me directly, I will share my contact information later in the show. So before I get into it, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the advent of Financial Literacy Month in the U.S. So Financial Literacy Month, a nationally recognized program to raise awareness about the need of financial education in schools and for adults, has been around for a very long time not necessarily under that label, I might add. So based on my research, financial literacy in America dates all the way back to the founding of the country. Uh, well, I guess, um, yeah, uh, 1700s. But its early years were purely informal. So personal finance lessons were not offered in schools. And financial careers specializing in financial literacy for adults did not even exist. I would also say that during that time, money management advice probably came from parents, I guess, friends and professional mentors, right? And it's not until the 19th, the 19th century, um, while money management was just as important as it is today, um, that financial literacy um, uh, actually still did not have any structured education setting yet. It was only during the 21st century, right, 21st century, that financial literacy was taught in an official manner through a variety of different courses that were typically classified as home economics with courses like household finances, family finances, or consumer economics. And according 
to a chap by the name of Alexander Lowy, a professor in, in the practice of finance at Gordon College in Massachusetts. The idea for introducing financial literacy into these classes originated at the University of Chicago. So through the 21st century, financial literacy really took off. It is now taught in high schools and universities throughout the United States. Today, 45 states incorporate, incorporated personal finance classes in their K-12 curricula. However, only 22 states are required to offer high school student to take a personal finance class. And only 17 states require high school student to take one. Additionally, a 2017 study uh, conducted by Champlain College Scholars graded 27 states with a C or below for their efforts to promote financial literacy. So while there is still lots of room for improvement, I would say that financial literacy has evolved significantly in America. And there are many, many schools and organizations that do an excellent job at teaching it. So today I will talk about, naturally, financial education, financial literacy, and financial wellness. So let's look at the first point, which is financial education. The OECD, which stands for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, defines financial education as the process by which financial consumers and investors improve their understanding of financial products and concept and, um, through information, instruction, and or objective advice, uh, develop the skills and confidence to become more aware of financial risks and opportunities, make informed choices, know where to go for help, and take other effective actions to improve their financial well-being. Simply put, uh, and try to um, summarize or shorten this uh, definition, financial education is an approach that focuses on teaching individuals about personal finance, which leads to comprehending how financial resources work, okay? And financial education empowers you to make good financial decisions and understand investment as well as money management. The fact remains that financial education is more necessary nowadays than ever before, not just for investors, but for the a regular consumer, okay? And it is also very important to those consumers and to the typical family trying to determine how to max out their budget, um, you know, trying to determine how to um, buy a home or care for their kids' education and or guarantee an income uh, when they decide to retire. Meanwhile, these consumers and families are presented with a myriad of complex financial products with a large range of options, from reverse mortgages to annuity to choose from, rendering any financial decision that much more difficult to make. So gone are the days when um, they could just choose between interest rate of on two different banks or, or, or savings plan, for example. At the same time, the responsibility and risk for financial decision that will have a significant influence on their 
future life. Most notably, pensions are rapidly shifting from government and employers to the employees. So the burden is, sh is, is shifted to the regular consumer. Furthermore, since life expectancy is increasing, the pension issue is becoming even more critical as an individual will be in retirement for longer periods of time, okay? So because of the growing sophistication of finance in general, individuals who are not financially educated will not be able to pick the appropriate savings or investment for themselves and may also be vulnerable to fraud and scams. That's how, that's how it goes, right? You don't know uh, and you go for it. However, when they become financially educated, they will be more inclined to save and to ask their service providers for products and services that meet their needs, which in turn will positively impact both investment levels and economic growth. So I will end the first point by saying that with the right financial education, people can learn how to save money, how to invest wisely, and how to avoid financial pitfalls. So let's look at the second point, which is financial literacy. While financial education teaches you about how to manage your money effectively and empowers you to make good financial decisions, financial literacy, on the other hand, is all about understanding the importance of these decisions. So in a final analysis, you need education to achieve literacy. So literacy implies competence in a sense, since it is uh, an application of learning, while having an education does not necessarily result in competence or learning. So financial literacy is simply um, the knowledge and understanding of basic financial concepts, as well as the ability to use that knowledge and other financial skills to manage financial resources effectively for a lifetime of financial well-being. However, financial education goes a step further by teaching people, as I mentioned earlier, to manage their money more effectively and make sound financial choices. So while financial literacy is important, it is financial education that is essential for financial success. Because again, I'm going to repeat myself, with the right ed financial education, uh, you can learn how to save money, how to invest wisely, and how to avoid financial disasters. So while I totally agree that financial education is the key to achieving um, financial success, financial literacy is more important than ever, okay? Because it has become a, I would say, a prerequisite for economic survival. Moreover, the path to financial literacy begins with a solid understanding of the basics, including personal finance and money management, which are the foundations of sound financial management. So this financial literacy terms can be defined in a lot of ways, okay? And I'm going to attempt um, to define it. So it is the ability to manage money, make good financial choices, and achieve financial independence. It is a person's ability to understand how money works and how it impacts 
their life. Okay, it is not just knowing how to make a check payment, but being able to understand what that check actually represents in terms of money. Okay, it is more than being aware of the difference between debit and credit. It is a knowledge of the basic principles of money and investments. Okay, and it is not just limited to understanding financial statements, for example, as it encompasses having a good appreciation for the actual purpose of financial statements, as well as the ability to use those financial statements to achieve a desired result. So I will end this point by saying that financial literacy is not a single skills. It is a combination of knowledge, skills, and attitude that enables you to make sound decisions about financial matters, which takes me to the third point of today's show, which is financial wellness. So most people think of financial literacy and financial wellness as one and the same. When you think of it, right? How can you be financial literate, financially literate, I should say, without being financially well? Well, guess what? There is a big distinction be between the two concepts. And understanding that difference is key to improving your financial well-being. So basically, financial literacy is the understanding of financial terms and concept, but simply understanding finances does not guarantee that you that your life or that you will be, I should say, financially uh, well, right? So as I explained earlier, financial literacy is developing an awareness and comprehension of how money works and how to manage it effectively. It often covers matters such as creating a budget, managing and paying off debts and savings for the long uh, term, um, such as you know, purchasing a home or establishing a retirement nest egg. Conversely, Financial wellness is the actual implementation of what you know, hence the difference. So as you well know, it is one thing to be aware of what you should be doing, like spend less than you earn, live within your means, avoid getting into debt to pay for stuff you cannot afford to in the first place, and save to accumulate wealth for long-term goals such as retirement or child's college education. And it is quite another to grasp how to carry out such tasks regularly or even to carry them out at all. So despite knowing better, right, some people just continue to dig themselves deep into that and choose to face the consequences later. So as I see it, in order to achieve financial wellness, it is critical that you must be both financially educated and financially literate. So through financial education, we gain a deeper understanding of financial concepts and strategies, while financial literacy allows us to apply this knowledge in practical ways. So with both of these components in place, we can make informed decisions about our finances and take charge of our financial well-being, right? Whether it is sorting through investment options or planning for retirement, financial education and financial literacy provide us with the tools we need to take action and become financially su successful. So, if you want to achieve financial wellness, you must prioritize both financial education 
and financial literacy in your life. After all, they are key components of any successful financial journey. So I will conclude this this third point by saying that in our fast-paced society, it is all too easy to get caught up in the day-to-day grind and forget about our long-term financial goals, right? Before we know it, years have passed and we still have not saved for retirement or created a solid emergency fund. So while financial literacy is key to avoiding this fate, I must point out that it is only part of the equation. So to achieve true financial wellness, you must take a holistic approach that encompasses both your spending and saving habits, as well as your overall mental well-being. Okay, so I will end this point about financial wellness by saying that Financial wellness requires both financial education and financial literacy, as, again, it encompasses the entire financial picture. Okay, so I'm going to wind down some and summarize what I talked about today. Well, I explain financial education, financial literacy, financial wellness, And I explored the difference, the importance, and the benefits of each of those concepts. So I hope that you have enjoyed the show and that its contents have shown you that financial wellness is about more than just having good financial literacy. So while it is important to have a firm understanding of the numbers. It is also crucial to be emotionally and mentally healthy when it comes to your finances. And that's where I come in. My mission is to help you develop a holistic plan for your money so you can achieve true financial wellness. So if you are ready to get started, Book a complimentary consult with me today. And um, you can do so by uh, visiting my website. I'm trying to, um, actually trying to put my my information uh, below here. Uh, So let me go and grab this banner real quick. Here it is. Um, So you could... um, do so by visiting my website, as I was saying, which is maryjocesar.com, or by sending me an email at mj at maryjocesar.com, or by sending me a DM, um, a direct message via Messenger or Instagram. My contact information, as I said, is scrolling uh, under the screen there, and I will leave it there until I end the show. So as you know, Uh, I like to end the show with a quote, and today I will read a short statement that I found while I was doing my research for, for the show, for today's show. And it reads, the ability for people to navigate the complexities of today's financial realities is a key component to better financial behaviors and personal empowerment And without financial literacy and financial education, the economic prosperity of the country as a whole is at risk. So this brings us to the end of today's Merging Life and Money episode. Again, I hope that you enjoyed today's show and I encourage you to watch the replay because it was a lot to take in. So for more information about how to achieve financial wellness from the inside out and live a purposeful life with the money that you have, join me next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Montana Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 
9 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time for my Bermudian pips, and 10 a.m. Friday, Brisbane, Australia time for my Australian friends. Thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie-Jo César, and I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now. Thank <music> you.